Welcome to this section of the class where what we're going to talk about is graphing the trigonometric functions, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, etc. We're going to go through them, we're going to learn how to graph them, and that's going to become important because we're going to use this, this time and time again as you get into more advanced calculus and other topics. So let's, let's go ahead and talk about it and see if, uh, what, we, what we can learn here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on the board what we kind of used a little bit earlier. I'm going to draw a little mini a little mini unit circle here because we're going to kind of use this, we're going to reference this. So this is a unit circle. You know, we call this axis the x-axis and this one the y-axis. And this is 1, this is negative 1 over here, this is negative 1 here, and this is 1. And so we, we draw what we call a unit circle, which just means it's a circle with radius 1. And if you remember back, that's how we derived, and my circle doesn't look too centered here on the axis, but that's not going to matter too much here in a moment. Uh, you remember we used this quite extensively uh, just, just not too long ago when we talked about how do you take like the, uh, the sine of uh, whatever 30 degrees or the sine of pi over 6. Pi over 6 is equal to 30 degrees. And you kind of use the unit circle to kind of put your, figure out where the angle is. And then by using that table that we had written on the board over here, we can figure out what this stuff is equal to. Okay, but one thing I want to point out to you is, is the following. Um, let's say we're working with 30 degrees. This is sort of a review here. This is roughly 30 degrees uh, or something uh, close to it right there. What you're doing when you have, and I'll draw a dotted line here, you know, uh, some angle that you're looking at where this would be the angle here. What you're doing, as we talked about earlier, is to find the sine of the angle on the unit circle, what you're doing is you're just measuring this length here because sine is, is basically the y measurement here. Sine is related to y. If you were um, looking at the cosine of this angle, you'd be measuring this quantity here, which is the uh, kind of the x direction, the x measurement. And so I taught you earlier that sine is related to y and cosine is related to x. And I told you that's very important. Here we're going to learn a little bit more why it's important. If you can imagine with me here, we'll kind of fix my unit circle here and we'll, we'll go on and talk about something pretty important. If you can imagine with me here a, um, a line here, an angle, that defines an angle. Uh, there's some sine and some cosine that's um, defined here by the y measurement here and then the x measurement over here. As you move this line around the unit circle, the sine and the cosine are going to change. And that makes sense because we, we've already figured out how to calculate the sine and the cosine. But my question to you is, what's, what's it going to look like as we rotate this line around this circle over and over and over again? Well, obviously here on the axis, the sine of this angle, which is zero degrees here, is zero because there is no y component here. And as we rotate here, the sine is going to get bigger and bigger because what we have here is the y component getting larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. Eventually it gets to 1. Okay, So up here at 90 degrees, or equivalently pi over 2 radians, the sine of this angle here is 1, positive 1. And then as we continue rotating down, the sine of this angle goes down again because again, as we get on this side, the sine, which is the y component, gets lower. Eventually it goes back down to 0 again. So as you change the angle, the sine goes up to 1, which is its maximum, and then down to 0. And then as you come down here, it gets down to negative 1, and then back 